So for tonight, I hope to leave you with four key things to take away. First, I hope that we can understand a little bit more about the nuances in the epidemiology and burden of cardiometabolic disease among age groups. And what do I mean by cardiometabolic disease? In this case, I refer to a group of related diseases such as heart attack, stroke, and diabetes that ultimately work together in order to lead to health disparities among different groups. In addition to that, I hope we can dive a little bit into the role of specific clinical, behavioral, demographic, and socioeconomic factors that contribute to differences in cardiometabolic risk among different Asian groups. Third, I hope that to discuss some new developments um, in the field to predict cardiometabolic disease risk, particularly among Asia groups. And finally, I hope to leave you with three action items to think about how can we together improve the health of Asian populations. So in general, what I really want to talk about is we have a lot of um, nationally representative studies through our national data sets, in addition to vital statistics, that ultimately try to track the epidemiology of um, Asian individuals around the United States. However, we also need to be conscious that there actually have been efforts in the past 10 years to oversample Asian individuals. So while there might be systematic differences bet between surveys for a single race group, disparities may not necessarily contrast with respect to certain groups. <laughs> ultimately, what can we take away from this? Well, perhaps there might be particular issues in the ways that you're sampled. Um, perhaps different Asian ethnic groups might be sampled differently, hence the differences in terms of the prevalence of heart attack. Um, also, in addition to that, because we're using public data, we might not actually know which Asian groups were sampled in this case. But generally, what we can say is that our national data sets are pretty consistent in terms of calculating the prevalence, prevalence for our cardiometabolic disease outcomes. Now, with respect to multiracial people here in the United States, about one in five Asian people identify as, a, as multiple races. So for, for example, being Asian and white or Asian and black. However, in comparison for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population, over 50%, nearly 60% of um, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander people identify as multiple race groups. Now, with respect to our survey data, unfortunately for our public use survey data, it's hard to get um, data on disaggregated Asian groups. If you're trying to find data on Native Hawaiian people or Pacific Islander people, it's hard to find it in public use data. So the question is, is if I wanna study these communities, how can I um, get better access to data? Well, one way we can get better access to data is by collaborating with healthcare systems and using electronic health records, which have thousands upon thousands of individuals of different and multicultural racial backgrounds. So ultimately, what can we take away um, from this? Well, first, it's that electronic health records, in light of the lack of data from national health sur surveys, can provide us with good data to understand not only health of aggregated um, groups, but also disaggregated single race and multiracial Asian and Pacific Islander groups. However, as the US becomes, becomes more multiracial, we might be missing out on key health disparities for multiracial Asian and Pacific Islander groups, who in this case appear less healthy as compared to non-Hispanic white people. And ultimately, this provides us with some new opportunities to really ask the question, how can we better address the increased risk of cardiometabolic disease among multiracial and Asian Pacific Islander populations? So one way we can think about this is about really contextualizing um, cardiometabolic disease among Asian people, specifically looking at what are those individual level contributors to cardiometabolic disease. So similar to how we think about um, cardiometabolic disease and the heterogeneity that exists within cardiometabolic disease, we know that there's actually a lot of differences with respect to Asian groups based on socioeconomic status. So with this, I wanna leave you with some final key takeaways. First, multiracial Asian and Pacific Islander groups experience increased risk of cardiovascular disease and obesity when compared to single race, Asian and non-Hispanic groups. Second, social and health factors have a meaningful contribution in explaining the burden of cardiometabolic disease among Asian groups. And finally, as the Asian and Pacific Islander populations diversify, there's a need um, for new prediction models to account for these diversifying populations. And with that, let me leave you with three calls to action. What can we do to improve Asian and Pacific Islander health? The first thing I wanna emphasize is the importance of advocacy. Again, there is no story if there are no data. So 
I really want to call upon you all to advocate with your legislators to more intentionally collect data on disaggregated Asian Pacific honor groups, but also make these data um, available for public use. Armand Jamal and his colleagues really highlighted some of these issues with respect to the availability of um, public use data, especially with respect to um, the different racial and ethnic groups. In addition to that, I want our stories to be known. So I wanna encourage you all to participate in clinical trials to increase the representation of Asian Pacific Islander people, especially those from less represented groups. Now, in particularly here at Stanford, we have a new cohort called the ARISE cohort, which aims to enroll 2,100 Asian Pacific Islander individuals in order to better understand the cardiovascular health among Asian Pacific Islander people. This is gonna going to be part of a 10,000 person cohort essentially very similar to the Framingham Heart Study to ultimately understand the individual and social factors that ultimately lead to differences in cardiovascular disease health. Now, if you're not here at Stanford, I wanna encourage you to look at other recruitment sites such as the University of Washington, University of Hawaii, and New York University as well. And finally, let's initiate and maintain health habits such as exercise, healthy eating, and um, lack of smoking and tobacco. 